what circumstances do you adjust the, the training program for for an athlete um, in a sport setting? Well, I guess coming from here, we've got mostly coaches or allied health staff and, and athletes who are all playing. So if you think about the average person's week these days, uh, whether they be school age, whether they be university age, or whether they be out in the workforce working full time, um, time, that's the one thing. It's, it's probably our biggest barrier as a coach and what we can do for our athletes. We look at they might be at sport training two to three times a week. They might have a high performance club they're associated with, whether they're down here in Victoria playing NAB or private school. Um, they might go to a public school where they've got a sports academy and then they might be trying to fit in recovery sessions, two-time gym sessions, and then their school homework and or work. How do you go about, like for the for the athletes listening that haven't done track and field and are interested to improve their, their speed development, what's a way that you integrate, I guess, the raw athletes into your, into your programming? Yeah, we look to start a base and it's looking to understand why we're doing certain things. All of our athletes would have done an A march and an A skip. This is a classic exercise that it's in all football warm-ups. But they actually understand why they're doing it and what the purpose of the exercise is. All right, we're trying to drive force into the ground. We're trying to point our toes more forwards than downwards. How can we make these things relatable to the athlete without telling them what to do? We don't want to always be telling them what to do, giving them the answers. We want them to give us the answers. So starting from a base understanding about why we're doing certain drills, how it's going to benefit them, how it's going to help them, and then much like any kind of adaptation we're trying to achieve, whether it be in the gym, whether it be running or sprinting, we look to start slow, all right? You can't just go bull out of a gate and, and start sprinting two, three times a week because your body's just not going to be, handle, be able to handle it. And another one for the athletes, how, how important is the surface that you're doing your speed development on? Uh, we, we really encourage to develop key sprinting qualities on a track. Uh, if you don't have access to a track, grass is fine as well. Um, obviously, the track's going to give you this uh, a little extra benefit of foot stiffness. Uh, it's more pliable surface than grass. So, plus, you, you, you put a kid in a track environment as to a grass environment, they already start thinking, all right, I'm at the track. This is where I watched the Olympics. I watched the 100-meter final. You know what I'm going to do? It, it starts playing into their psychology. They're actually going to start running with more intent and running faster and running harder when they're doing it. So... We try to just encourage them to implement the drills into their program when they can. And one of the biggest takeaways is, all right, if you can't get to our sessions weekly or, or you're struggling to find time, get down to training half an hour earlier. Go through your mobility warm-up, do your physical preparation stuff, do your necessary drills for, the, for what we're looking to develop and go out and run two efforts. What are some common mistakes that you see current athletes and, and specifically footballers that seems to be your niche uh, are making and, and what are the best ways to sort of correct it for, for us coaches listening in? Oh, I, I, I don't like to necessarily label them as mistakes because um, everything has its place. Like if we look at a, a sled push rather than a sled pull, you could argue that a sled pull is probably more contextual based because you get to use the arms. Does everyone have the availability of a sled that they can toe and does everyone have the space that's necessary to develop acceleration if we're looking to do that in the gym or is it going to be easier for us to implement a prowler or a sled and push and work on force through the ground and, and work on getting into those positions so i think the key mistakes is something that i refer to before it's just not respecting the rest periods that are needed to be able to keep intensity up at the levels we want we want to try and get our sprint efforts at 100 percent each time um, so I think that's the biggest thing. And then it's the coaches and, and athletes that are tuned in. Uh, where is the best place to, to find yourself and, and where is Six Principles uh, located as well? So Six Principles in Moorabbin. Uh, we're a little tucked away gym. I, I have to take a leaf out of everyone's books here and, and start building our social media presence a little more. But you can find us at, at the Six Principle. Uh, we've got a great team of coaches there that are all starting to really make waves in the industry and pave their own paths. The Speed Project, you can check, catch us at the Speed Project Mel. Um, and then my own personal one is at coach.jaredk. So um, that's where all that information is. And as I'm an open book, I'm always happy to chat to coaches and athletes alike and, and 
and help them in any way I can. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Joe. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you.